don't want that. Where is she? Um, so the, the way the quiz is going to work this time, I want to change it up a little bit because I, I don't know if you agree with me. I think you will. That sitting here for a while on Zoom is kind of annoying and uncomfortable. So here's more people. Okay, everybody's checking in now. I love it. They're all fashionably late. Um, more people. I love it. I'm waiting. All right. I think everybody's lining. The way the quiz is going to work, I've put a time limit on it. And you have, so the minute you open it up, you will have an hour and 15 minutes to do it. Does, does that make sense so far? So we're not going to do it on Zoom during class. So let me, let me say this again. I'm going to, let me hold off on that for a minute because more people are logging in. There's another one right there. I want to, I don't want to say that like five times. So let me, let me, I'm going to come back to the quiz in a minute, but at least the, what you need to know right now is it's not going to happen during class. You'll have time on your own to do it. Um, oh, sure. All right. I, I didn't know how people would necessarily react. I thought maybe mostly it would be a good reaction, but who knows? So before I get into the rest of the quiz stuff, any, any questions on homework? And then by the time I'm done with that, maybe everybody who's going to be here will be here. Um, any other questions on homework stuff? Yeah, I had a question about the, um, the Z-score. Yes. Um, or I think it was Sophia who was talking about 103 earlier. Yes. Um, for 103 to get the um, Z-score, do you add up the, the GPAs and then so you can get the, uh, the mean and then go from there? They give you the mean. Do you see that? So for... How do you say that? How do you say this? Anybody know? Is that Thai? I think it's this is, I think it's pronounced Dewey. Dewey? Dewey. 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 Okay. Um, so for Dewey, do you see his school's average? You already know his school's average. Yes. Yeah. So there's the average 3.2. So let me, do, let me do this real quick. Let me do this so I can write on there easier. I got to move that there. I got to move this one over here so I can use my neat pen thing. And then it looks like I am not a seven-year-old writing on this with my mouse. Okay, here we go. So everybody sees, can you see the book again? You're not going to tell me. Okay, fine. <laughs> I'm going to assume you can yes. see the book. Yes, thank you. We can see it. Thank you so much. It's so nice. Okay. Um, so the formula for the Z-score that we figured out from doing that, uh, the thing together last time, and, it, and last time we were together seems like a million years ago, I know, was this formula. And this formula makes a ton of sense. The idea is how far is it from the data point to the mean divided by the standard deviation. So how many standard deviations fit between the mean and the data point? Because that's what a z-score means. A z-score means the number of standard deviations from the mean to the data point. I think I made a big deal out of that last time. Is that okay so far? Yeah. Okay, so for Dewey, so looking at each row at a time, for Dewey, what's the mu? What's mu? 3.2. That's his average, right? The average is another name for mean, which is, means the, the mu. So that's 3.2 there. And what's the data point for Dewey? 2.7. 2.7. And what's the standard deviation for Dewey School? 0.8. 0 0.8, okay. Bah, 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 whatever the hell that is. And you do that for each person. And then you can tell. So if somebody had a negative two Z score, if somebody else had a 1.7 Z score and somebody else had a 1.8 Z score, who did the best relatively? One point eight. Yes, because they are the furthest above average. Whoever this person would have been definitely did very bad. They are two standard deviations below the average. That is not good. 
I'm not saying those are the answers. I'm just, I just gave you examples. So you got to do the z-score formula for each one, and then you can tell which one did the best. Okay. I think cool. I just confused myself when I was looking back at an example, but I understand. I understand. I understand. It's, it's very often it's the way that they give the information gets in the way a little bit. I understand that. All right, I'm going to stop sharing. Any other questions? Oh, there is a question. Somebody sent me a question. Let me see. Dead gummit. Technology. Okay, 82. Oh, good. This is a good one. All right. I tell you what, let me do this. Let me do this. Okay. Okay. And you're all like, do whatever the hell you got to do, Jeff. You're the freaking teacher with this shit. Okay. So this is going to help. This is not going to be directly about the problem, but it's going to answer the problem. We can't see the top of the board. Yeah, we try to the eye camera. I gotta adjust. I gotta adjust. I know. I know. Okay. Can can somebody tell me? I didn't want to make this too freaky. Yeah, sure. Can somebody tell me what the median is for this data? Four. 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 Hello. Boom, 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 yeah. Now, if I kill that number, right? So this is the original. What is the median now? 4.5. Yeah, it's going to be 4.5. So how could I make the median? Didn't the median increase? Did not the median, didn't the median increase? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. How did I accomplish it? I had fewer numbers down here, right? So now, so if I, if I, uh, this is horrible language because the actual problem talks about people. So I don't, let me just say, there's no way to make this nice. I am an evil God. I am an Old Testament like, or whatever kind of deity you enjoy. I am just this asshole little you know, adolescent God. I just was created. I'm not like, oh, you love to kill people. So I killed this person. Um, so let me bring that back to life. So this is if I kill one, the median went up. What if I made this one, made, what if I made a new one that's an older person? Now oh, what's the median? It'll get higher? It'll also get higher. So if you think about it, I just answered that whole damn question. So this is, you can look at it from a mathematical standpoint. What could I do with a bunch of numbers to make the median go up? Less down here or more up there. Now it's on you to take what we just discussed and put it in the context of that problem. Does that make sense? I like it. Anything else from homework stuff? Um, Go interpreting there. 26C. 26. Let me go back here. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's the bicyclist one. All right. Bam. Oh, neat. You guys shifted over there. I like that. Uh, this one here, right? The bicyclist? Yes. Yes. So we're talking about time up here. So low time is good, of course. So you should have been able to answer the first part about do you want a high percentile or a low percentile? So this one says, 
this bicyclist is in the 90th percentile time. So is he one of the fastest or one of the slowest? What does that mean by itself? 90th percentile in terms of time. That means what? Only 10% of people finish in a time shorter than he did. No, because what does a percentile always mean? That percentage got something below what you did. So if I'm in the 90th percentile time, then 90% of the people got a time that was less than mine. I really want you to under, I think you guys get so wrapped up in, well, it's better to do a good, it's better to do less time. So it must mean it, no, none of that shit matters. 90th percentile means 90% of the other data was below you, period. Then you can figure out if that's good or not. Does that, do you see what I'm saying? So it seems like, it feels like some of you guys feel like you have to really think about it a lot in the first place. No, a percentile means the same damn thing all the time. 90% below you. In this case, that sucks. 90% of people finished in a time less than you did. In a race, that sucks. You guys with me? So wouldn't that make him slower? There you go, yeah. He's amongst the slowest. He's in the top 10% slowest, which is a bad situation, right? So when I say, so some of you guys are not really getting the idea. Whenever I say write a sentence interpreting a percentile, it's gotta say something like 80% did less than this. That's, you know, so if it's the 80th percentile, 80% of the whatevers did less than this. That's what it always, always means. You guys cool? You guys all right? Yeah. Yeah, you guys are cool. Okay, let me stop sharing. Anything else before we get back? Let me, I think it's about time I can start talking about what the quiz is going to be like today. I don't see any other questions. And we seem to have solidified around 40 of us are here. Oh, no, it's not. So you can see Nathan's question. I did not design the quiz to be that long. I am giving you that much time, uh, understanding that once you get started, who knows what kind of weird shit could happen, right? You with me? If, uh, if you have problems uploading your scan and your time is running out, email it to me, because then I'll have a timestamp, and then continue to try to upload it. You guys, you guys understand what I'm saying? Don't email me later and say, I know it says three hours late, Mr. Waller's well, trying for three hours. No, 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 no. Email it so I have confirmation of when you were really trying to upload. Are you, you with me? So I gave you that much time just because weird shit can happen. It should not take you an hour and 15 minutes, but if you want to be really methodical, then you can be really methodical, right? But don't think that I've designed an hour and 15 minute quiz. I haven't. Oh, yeah. All right. So I got a question about, I can't even read that the, this, our silly, yeah. I can't think about the word China without hearing a certain voice in my head. But um, China, uh, there's, which problem is that? That was, what problem was that? Thank you for laughing. 86, okay. So this is a really good question. I think I addressed it, but kind of quickly before. I wanted to show an example of where weird things can happen with box plots. So these, these all look like they've been injured, right? They look like they're missing uh, box plot limbs. So why is, I can't even say it. Why is China, uh, missing the like the box. What does that mean? Well, how can I make a, the box disappear? Because what what denotes the sides of the box? 
the minimum and max? Somebody said something, and I don't know if minimum you're. Minimum and maximum? No. What are the minimum and maximum? They are where the. So looking at this, Germany, where are the min and max on Germany? The min and the max are the whiskers. The zero to see 11. Germany? These are the whiskers. Uh, that's right. the min and max. So what are these? Quartiles. Which quartiles? One and three. Yeah, there you go. So Q1 and Q3, that basically defines how wide the box is. So how can I make the box disappear if Q1 and Q3 are? Equal. Equal. And in fact, that kind of forces Q2 to equal one of them also, right? Let me stop for a minute. Does that make sense? Why? So, all right, let me do this again. Sorry. I want to draw on this and I've got it on the wrong monitor. Oh, okay. Get over there. Get, come here. Where are you? Get over there. Okay. Well, let me share it again. Share. Share. Bam. Let me get this over here. Oh, I can't wait till we're back in the freaking classroom. All right. I don't want to go back right now. Don't get me wrong. We're not ready for it, but I really hope we're ready soon. Um, so a normal, kind of like a normal box plot looks something like, you know, let's just pretend like it looks like this, right? So this is Q1, Q2, Q3, right? So if Q1 and Q3 got closer to each other, wouldn't that make the box get smaller? Yes? And then just yes. keep going. Can't you make it disappear basically? But if you make Q1, Q2, and Q3 all equal, you just get a line there. So it is possible for a box plot to look like this. Now, China doesn't look like that. So not only are Q1, Q2, and Q3 equal to each other, but they're also either equal to the max or the min. They could all be zero. Yeah, they could all be right there. Wait, so what shape would that indicate? Yeah, so what would that mean about the distribution? So for example, if, if you assume, and it's okay to assume because they don't tell you, which is really shitty, but assume it's all right there, right? Q, like the min equals Q1 equals Q2 equals Q3, right? How much data is zero then? How much data is captured up to Q3? How, what's below? 75%. Yeah, so that would be 75% of the data would be at zero. So if you think about the distribution, it would be all zero and then just a little bit out there, right? So you can think about, you could actually answer this question talking about how skewed it is, if you want to. That's one way to answer uh, part A. So it's basically saying that China has little to no travel? Yeah, and again, I'm kind of assuming that these are all here. They could have all been up here instead. But let's go ahead and assume they're all down there, which is actually what the book does, but it doesn't say that here, which kind of sucks. Okay. So assuming that the reason there's no box is because these have all been pushed down here for China. Okay. Does that help? I mean, sometimes it's just, you could answer part A in your own words if you understood what these meant. So, so what does this dotted line mean for Germany? What's missing in the box quarter that's normally three. there? Quarter three. Second, sorry. sorry? Q2? The third quarter. Q2. Q2. Q2 is normally that middle line. So what does that mean? Q2 is actually equal to? Q3. Q3, I like it. So that's why that's that way. But Germany is definitely a lot more symmetric, but it is a little bit skewed in this direction because you got a, you got like 50% all happening right here. So 50% of the Germans have gone to eight countries. Not 50%, 25%, yeah. So like a large chunk of them have gone to eight countries. And of course the United States is like all that. It looks a little more like China, just not as extreme. 
because it's all down here, right? I don't know if that helps you guys out. That's why the box plots look a little weird, each one. Of course, for United States, what's, what's this mean? There's no whisker down there, so what's this mean? That's also the minimum? Yes, the min equals Q1. So you got 25% have been to no countries, other countries, which sounds about right. Now, now real quick, why, why have so many Germans gone to so many other countries? Because they're surrounded on all yeah. sides, almost. They're surrounded. <laughs> so, it's, so one thing is it's easier. They have a much better uh, train situation. If you've ever ridden the rails in Europe, I did, man, and, and they are awesome. Most of them. There were a couple that weren't, so I, weren't quite so awesome. But most of them are amazing. And if you ride the rails in America, you're like, what the shit? Come on. All right, sorry, sorry. Everybody with me? Does that help at all? Hopefully that helps you a little bit. So I'd rather you use your own words, but if you can't really understand what these are saying, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, it makes sense. Thank you. Okay, okay. All right. Anything else, guys? All right. All right, I'm going to clear. I'm going to stop sharing. Pop. So let me show you real quick before we keep going. Let me give you a little bit of insight into what this quiz situation will look like. Um, oh, hold on. Let me get this. Where are you? There you are. So it's not available yet. If you look at your modules, you will actually see quiz two. But when you click on it, it'll say not available yet. <laughs> but I can see it because I'm the teacher man. Ain't it? So what it's gonna look like, you can read through this. You'll have an hour and 15 minutes. Once you, now, now let me just tell you, it's not, yours is not gonna look exactly like this because I'm the teacher, it looks different. But down here, it's gonna have a button that says, take the quiz. And once you click that button, the timer starts. So you wanna be pretty certain that you've got the time. So once you click the take the quiz button, do you see up here how the timer's going? If that freaks you out, you can hide it so it's not like in your face and you're not just staring at it, <laughs> right? Uh, I'm not gonna show you the quiz. You can see the first few questions and you, these are questions you knew I was gonna ask. I give you data down below here that you have to work with. And then at the very bottom is a way you can submit. So you're gonna, on another sheet of paper, you're gonna do the work, you're gonna scan it, and you're gonna submit it just like you do with your homework. You guys with me? And just like you did with the other quiz, for that matter. We're just not gonna do it together on Zoom, so it's not quite as awkward and whatever. Is that all right with everybody? You guys okay? Yeah, I like that better, actually. Me too. What's the maximum amount of data points you'd give us on a quiz to compute? I'll tell you this, I gave you 32 uh, data points on the quiz. And that's pretty much close to the maximum I would give you. Yeah, so if that seems like a lot, then don't, don't tempt me, because it's not a lot. I like it. Okay. So we finished that, uh, what do you call it? The practice sheet for 2.7 that dealt with standard deviations. I, I, there's a couple of things I wanna talk about uh, very quickly with standard deviations. And then we're gonna get into chapter three, which is probability. Um, so let me, let me solidify a few things. So, Standard deviation is insanely important. I know I have to adjust, give me a minute. So standard deviation kind of like rules our life eventually in this class and in statistics in general. Um, but so can you, can you guys tell me at this point, can you tell me if I had a distribution, and by the way, this is what's called a normal distribution. Can somebody tell me some, some qualities about this thing? Can somebody define what this shape looks like for me? 
each side. Bell curve. Bell curve. I like it. Say again, the other person. The mean is in the middle. Means in the middle, and so is the what? Because what is this? It is perfectly symmetrical. 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 Right? Symmetric, boogie woogie. So the mean the equals the mode equals the median. Median. Because it's perfectly symmetric. So a truly normal curve is perfectly symmetric. It looks like a bell. It's called the bell curve. If you ever heard of a teacher curving their grades, has anyone heard this, experienced it? That just means they pick it up and they move it. So let's say like everybody got from 20 to, to, to 50. So they just pick the curve up and they move it up. So that is curving your grades. I curve grades sometimes too, and mine is a little more fancy. I not only pick it up and move it up, but I also squeeze it. <laughs> but, uh, oh well, that's just me doing weird shit. Um, okay, I don't want to get that specific. If I have this curve and I have this curve, which one has a larger standard deviation, one or two? Which one has a bigger standard deviation? Yeah, the second one is more spread out, right? And then if I had this one, for example, that one obviously has a very small, small standard deviation. I like it. So here's the thing about standard deviation. Standard deviation, I call it steps. I kind of use the word steps when I'm talking about standard deviation. So if I wanted to step around uh, this data, I want my steps to be a little bit bigger so I can move around it. If I use that same size step to get around this data, I'm like missing the whole thing. I want my steps to be smaller so I can really analyze what's going on. So um, this, this data point and this data point are like maybe one step apart. But on this graph, the same two are probably more than one step apart. So it's, it's the standard deviation is like the markings on a ruler, right? So for this one, my markings might be farther apart. And for this one, my markings will be much closer together. So it's sort of like using inches or centimeters. So if my data is more spread out, I want to use larger steps. That's why sigma gets bigger. So for example, let's make this a little more specific. Let's come back up to this nice guy. Let's say his mean is uh, 50. And let's say his standard deviation is uh, four. What's one step up? 54. 54. And what's one step down? 46. 46. I like it, right? So what's another step up? 58. That's crazy. And what's another step down? 42. 42. That's All right. I like it. So let me write this underneath here. Let me see if you guys understand what I'm doing when I do this. Underneath here, I'm going to write 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. What are those? Absolute value. What are those? Say again. Same, same. The steps. Yes. Now, now let's, let's really get there. Let's really get there. Be more specific. What are these? The amount of standard deviations. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The amount of standard deviations from the mean to the data point, which is another Z long score. Way to Z score. Kick ass, kick ass, kick ass. These are the Z scores for each of these. So all a Z score tells you is the number of standard deviations from the mean to whatever data point. I like it. Let me push this a little bit more. Here's what gets interesting about a normal curve. Within one step of the mean, within one standard deviation, there is 68% of the data. Visually, that makes sense. 
So that's why I've got to step, I got to step out bigger for this guy to catch 68%. But for this guy, I don't have to step out very far at all to catch 68%. Because the standard deviation here is smaller, the standard deviation here is bigger, and the standard deviation here is like medium, whatever. Is everybody semi with me, you guys? All right. And, and if I take one more step out, there's 95% of the data here from two down to two up. So within two steps is 95% of the data. That is a big reason why we call anything outside of two steps, we call it unusual. Because what's the probability? I know I'm saying that word before, but I don't care. You guys know basic probability. What's well, probably I get something out here? 5%. 5% chance, because 95% of the stuff's in there. So if, the, if something had a 5% chance of happening, doesn't it make sense to call that unusual? So if these were heights, which are obviously not, this would be like the seven foot tall dudes, and this would be like, you know, little people. Like Warwick Davis. Anybody know Warwick Davis? No? Okay. You guys with me? So they would be unusual. We might do a double take before we catch ourselves because we don't see people that are seven foot seven. I don't see people that are four foot tall very often. Okay, okay, enough. Let me think, is that all I want to say? Oh yeah, so just to kind of complete this picture, if you go one more step out, you actually catch 99.7% of the data is within three steps. This whole thing, the 68, 95, 99.7, that's called the empirical rule. It's just, it's what it's called. Almost doesn't matter what it's called, but that's just what it's called. Okay. Is it always going to be those percentages for every If it's a normal curve, that's the only, only time this normal? Only normal curves, Got for it. sure. You could have another distribution that looks funky as hell, but kind of matches, matches? The hell's that? Matches these three. But if I just draw some funky ass curve, horny man, horny man, <laughs> I don't, you know, there's nothing that tells me that so much has to fall within one. It could be anything. Now, I, okay. It actually couldn't be anything, which is really interesting. There's actually uh, this Russian dude figured out that, let me, let me draw, let me do one little thing about this. This is a very interesting thing. So could I have a distribution that looks like this? Like it could be nothing but really young people and really old people and nobody in the middle. Some kind of weird take on Logan's run. I wanna see if anybody knows Logan's run. Um, so maybe within a step, within one standard deviation, the mean there's 0%, but the minute I take another step out, the thing that this rule says is no matter, no, this is kind of cool. And I know you guys don't appreciate how cool this is, but no matter how you draw this thing, if you go two steps out, you catch at least 75%, no matter what. So somebody out there must be thinking, well, what if I just drew this further away? What if I just move this over there? Well, then what gets bigger if I do that? Standard deviation. Standard deviation. So it gets bigger and it catches it still. So it kind of makes sense that it should be some number. And this dude, his name is Chevy Chev. I call him Chubby Dude. Not because he's chubby. I have no idea what it looks like, to be honest, just because of the name. But Chevy Chev determined it's got to be at least 75%. And if you take one more step out, it's at least 89%. But the normal curve is one of the shapes that I know for sure exactly what should be where. 
All right, maybe, maybe. Let me, let me, let me see what time we got. Let me push this one step further. Let me get rid of this here. Let me see if you guys, let me, let me try to push this. Could anyone, anyone, anyone tell me uh, what percentage is right here? In here. 34. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Because what's the mean do? It cuts it in half, right? So can anyone tell me what percentage is up here? Let's say, let, let me not be so evil, Jeff. What percentage is above 58? 0 0.03. No. But close. What's in here? 99. 95. 95, yeah. 95. Right? 95. So what's out there? 2.5. 5%. So then 2.5 on that side because it cuts it in half. Oh. So you could actually work with these three numbers and get some more specific information. Once we get to chapter six, we're going to know how to get for anything, <laughs> for anything. We're going to have a chart. We can look it up and figure out what percentage is below that thing. Right now, we only know three numbers, 95, 68, 99.7, right? And then we can kind of play around with those a little bit, but okay, maybe, 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 maybe. So if, if these were heights, I could figure out, well, if I make my door this tall, then this percentage of people will have to duck. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Heights of men, heights of American men, and women, by the way, but just let's look at men, are known to be normally distributed. So I can actually tell if I make a door a certain height, what percentage of the population of men will have to duck to get through it. And you might... If you make it too short, you've got a lot of people complaining because they'll be leaving summer. All right, man, see you later. <laughs> you know, and that's not going to be good PR for you, right? Maybe. So if we were all hobbits, we would certainly live in slightly different conditions because we wouldn't need so much headspace. As you learn if you watch Lord of the Rings. Okay. All right. So I think that's all I want to say about section two seven was this extra little bit. And that's plenty, it seems like. Okay, so I'm gonna erase all this business here. Show me erase the chalk. All right, I'm learning karate as I do this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a, a we're going to get a little bit into, uh, we're actually going to get a lot into chapter three. We'll see. I've got about an hour or so to do that. I have to turn my um, AC on or else I'm going to die. So I'd rather not die. Let me just do that. Oh, thank you. Okay. Much better. And I just destroyed my poor little dude. Are you all right? All right, I know. All right. So let me ask you this. Uh, we, we have to know the basics of probability. You have to. So let me just check where we are. Um, if I had a classroom of 48 people, yeah, and I found out that five of them are left-handed, What's the probability I pick a left-handed person if I randomly pick one of them? Five, Five out of 48. 48. Yeah, good, right? Straightforward. Five out of 48 chance. And somebody help me out who's got the calculator. What would that be? 10.4%. Uh-oh, what, what? 10.4%. 10.4? 
So roughly 10.4%. So this is just relative frequency, right? That's what that is. So relative frequency is actually what probabilities fundamentally are. The top, so the probability of something will be the number matching A over the total number of possibilities. And to be really, really honest, that never changes. You're not going to trust me once you see all the formulas for probabilities. But I'm going to try to show you how it always comes back to this. OK. Did I, did, did I talk to you about, did we do the birthday thing? OK. I got enough people. This might work. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let me come over here. All right, let's do the birthday thing. You're all like, oh God, what the shit is the birthday thing? So I already have this from another class of mine. On a piece of paper, write really big. So I was born September 21st. Was anybody else born September 21st? My birthday coming up. COVID birthdays are the worst. Okay, nobody. So if you were born on May 17th, you're going to write the number 17 really big. Can everybody turn their cameras on? Does everybody have that ability right now? If you are not able to turn your camera on, I guess you can chat your answer when I get to your month. Oh, look at all these people. I love this. Oh, man, that makes me feel so much better. Okay, I got actual people behind those names. So, uh, do I have multiple screens? Oh shit, so I'm gonna have to go back and forth, okay. Does everybody understand what's happening? So if you were born January 30, 30th, you're gonna put the number 30. Don't put January on, just put the number 30. Don't worry. That's neat, I think that's gross bond, but it sort of looks like the bridge of the, Frida, it looks like the bridge of the enterprise. All right, I like it. So where are my January babies? Can you guys, if, if you're a January baby, can you hold up your number? Oh, geez. Frida, I don't know what this says. Oh, that's because you got your uh, virtual background on. So I got a 28th. I got a, Michelle is showing me a piece of paper. Man, this is not gonna work, is it? Shit. <laughs> I, need, I need it darker. Is that say the seventh, Frida? Ninth, ninth, ninth? Ninth, okay. I don't think I got a, a, a hit. Oh, Michelle, what does it say? 11th? 15. All right, I can't, I can't see it. All right. So no, no uh, twins, no birthday twins in January. In fact, do you guys think somebody else is going to have the same birthday? Do you think that there are two people that have the same birthday? Yes, there's a 100% chance, at least one pair. There's not a 100% chance. I appreciate that, though. 99. Once you get above 34 people, there is a better than 50% chance that you'll have at least one pair with the same birthday, which goes against what we think would happen. Because we don't even know how many pairs of people. Do you know how many pairs of people there are in here? No. So I could take Janik and, and pair him with me, or pair Janik with Sophia, or pair Janik with Shalimar, or pair Janik with, and I'm not even, I could then pair me with Sophia, and me with Shalimar, and me with, a, and I'm still, I'm, I'm still on the second freaking person. That's a ton of pairs. So February, where's my February baby is at? Really make that number dark. I see a 25th, any 29th, that would be neat. Oh shit, I forgot to scroll over. Where are me more February babies? Is February all Rhiannon's? Rhiannon's, that's your birth month, dude. You got it. All right, where's my March baby? Oh, the, uh, yeah, where's my March babies? March babies? All right, let's see. Alexander's, oh, man, this really sucks. Okay, Vanessa's got the second. Thank you, Vanessa. Jabal's got the 27th. 
I like it. Vanessa, I saw yours. Okay, I think that's there. Oh, there we go. Eric's got, wait a minute. Eric's got the 27th. Wasn't that somebody else's? You guys got to work with me. Jabal, were you the 27th? Yes? Can somebody be as excited as me? <laughs> I'm pretty hyped right now. <laughs> All right, so we got a birthday twin pair right there, right? The 27th of February. That's so cruel. Oh, no, cool. Mark. Was that on March? You said March. Yes, it was on March. Okay, so it almost doesn't matter. But you're right. I'm on March. March 27th. Uh, let's see if we get some more. So we already got one pair of January, March, April. We're my April babies. I got the 16th. I appreciate that. It's really dark. That's awesome. A 27th, a third, a 22nd. I think that's everybody. Oh, is that two 16s? Uh, Sabrina and who else was it? Sabrina. Who else was 16? Samantha. Sabrina and Samantha, you're both 16. Is that true? I mean, not 16 years old, but 16th of whatever freaking month I'm in, <laughs> April. I think that's true, right? Oh, somebody's chatting at me. There's no way I'm going to keep track of that, dude. Oh, help me. Okay. All right. We got two twins, April, March, May. Where's my May babies? May 10th. And then somebody else is showing me and blank paper were better. 27th. Hey, uh, uh, it says it says on uh, May 10th. 10th? Yeah. Who else was 10th? Somebody else was 10th, weren't they? Santiago was 10th. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm like a little too excited. I am sorry. <laughs> I do apologize. <laughs> it is interesting leading a life when you are very easily amused like me. Uh, May, June, June babies. June babies going once. June babies going, oh, there we go. Charles is something. The, I, I hold it. What is it say, Charles? Hold it up to the camera. 11. There. You keep moving it away. 11, okay. You're like teasing me with it. All right, June, July. July 10th, July 11th. Oh, this is crazy. Wait a minute, Nathan. Oh, that's the fourth. I got so excited. And then Santana, I cannot read that. The 21st. 21st, okay. I think that's everybody, right? That's all my July babies. Uh, August babies. August babies. 16th. Any more August babies? Okay, that's your month. Normally there's more August babies because it's nine months earlier. It was kind of cold in some place. Uh, let's see, August, September. Should be some September babies. I'll do mine now too. Uh, I see 14th, 21st, 19th, 6th. Is that all my September babies? I think, yeah, no, and then October 23rd. All right. I think I only saw one, right? October 23rd and then November. What is today? Did I miss somebody's birthday today? What is today? That is the ninth. Nobody was today, right? Any, there was no Novembers. What about December? 23rd, 23rd, okay. All right, I will. I will spare you from the normal Christmas questions related to your birthday. Okay. Somebody else is 29th of September. Oh, no, somebody's December 17th. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you for, for, for indulging me. I think we got three pairs, didn't we? I got such a bad memory. Who knows? There is at least two. So that's pretty cool. So that is, our brains are not hardwired biologically for understanding probability because there was no reason to beyond if I go that way, there's a higher chance something will kill me. So I will go that way. <laughs> I mean, that's, that is all that evolution required us to have hardwired in our brains. Don't say a damn word if you think evolution is not true. I don't wanna hear that shit right now. I don't need that. America screwed up enough already. Don't make me cry so personally. Okay, thank you. Um, so here's something else real quick. I don't think I've done this with you guys either. Have I done the let's make a deal thing with you guys? Does that sound familiar? Okay, no. So I got 
to keep an eye on the time. I've got three doors. So there was a show called Let's Make a Deal. I think it's still on the air. Uh, but it used to be, so during the show, people win prizes. At the end of the show, they pick three. Yeah, Monty Hall, you got it. They pick three. He used to be. He's dead now, of course. He was kind of old. Uh, they would pick three contestants, and they would go through each one. Uh, and somebody would say, I'll give all my shit back in the, in the chances to win, let's say $50,000, right? So they would take him to the stage. There's three doors behind two of the doors are goats. And we're assuming that the person is not hoping to win a goat. And behind the third door is $50,000. You with me? So the host says, pick a door. So somebody, the first one I hear, one, two, or three? Two. Two. So door number two has been chosen. Now here's where things get really interesting. Well, not quite yet. This is still boring. What is the probability that whoever just said two, one, what's the probability that person has won the prize? 33%. 30, 30 that's, that's, that's not precise enough. One third. one third is the best way you can answer that question. That's so the, the probability that you've won is one out of three, which only makes sense because there's one door that matches what we're looking for out of three. All right. So what's the probability that he lost? Two thirds. Two thirds chance, right? So there is a two thirds chance that the prize is not behind this door. Are you guys with me? Now, now pay attention. The host then says, I'm going to open up door number one and show you there's a goat. Spider goat, spider goat. It's a mutant goat. You leave that poor goat alone. It's had a rough life. It doesn't need shit from you. And then the host says, do you want to switch doors or do you want to stay? Does it make any difference from a probability standpoint about if you stay or change? No. That is the wrong answer. It's 50 50, 50 right? It's not 50 50. It's not 50 50. It isn't. Why did I open that door? One third of the time, you did not get the prize. Which door would the host definitely not open because then the show would be over? He would not open the door that has the prize. So the only time that this door doesn't have the prize is if you picked it in the first place, but you only had a one third chance of picking it. So more than likely, the reason I didn't open that door is because the prize is there so you have you double your chances of winning if you switch. Now let me show you. I almost can guarantee eighty percent of you are like, I don't know what the shit this guy is on. You might feel that way before I was talking talk about Bonnie Hall. So let me show you this. Let me show you this. What if instead of three doors, there were a hundred doors? Right? One, two, three, a hundred, ninety-nine, ninety-eight. Right? All right, right? And there's a hundred doors. And you pick door number two. I open every freaking door except door 98. I show you goat, 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 goat. And I don't open that door. Does it make more sense now that I am almost guaranteed the prize is here. One out of a hundred times, you will have picked the prize. And then I can open every door and just randomly pick one not to open. 99 out of a hundred times, you did not pick the prize. Therefore, the door I don't open will have the prize then. So if I switch doors, I have a higher chance of winning. Frida, you're exactly right, but the probability doesn't give a shit. 
you double your probability up here. Does that mean you win if you switch? This is where people have a disconnect with probability. Just because I'm doubling my probability, does that mean that I'm going to definitely be good? No. But I would rather double my probability if I could. Okay. But you're right. It's, it's a mind game at the end. You're completely right. All right. Enough of that. My, my real point for this, this is not the kind of work you're going to have to do. Don't freak out. This is a good example of how probability is not hardwired in our brains because it didn't have to be. We didn't need it to survive. We don't know. We, we don't need to know this shit to survive. Right. Okay. Why am I doing this? I think I wanted to stay up there, probably. Um, so what I want to do, I wanted to sit down for a minute, I guess. Why not? Mm. So I'm going to go over some examples of what we will see. That will be really helpful, wouldn't it? Um, uh, probability problems. So I'm going to get back up again. I'm going to bring the board back over because I just enjoy doing that, apparently. So let me give you, all right, let's start off really, 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 really simple. Really simple meaning very boring, but okay, that's okay. We can deal with that. If I have in a bag, I have four, uh, what do you got? Blue chips, four blue poker chips, five green and 11 red poker chips, right? And I reach in and I pick one. What's the probability that I pick a red poker chip? 11 out of 20. Yeah. So again, the basic idea of probability, it's the number that match what I'm looking for divided by the total. Can you, does everybody see that? Can you understand what the person was thinking that says the answer to this is one out of 11, which is the wrong answer, by the way. Can you understand this person's thought process? Sort of. Sort of. What do you think they were thinking? Uh, they were just using the group of red and, you know, like as if there was only the red chips in the bag. I love it. So they weren't really thinking of it that way, but that is the way that this mathematically means. If there were only red chips and I want to pick a specific one, like there's one red chip with, an, with a, uh, something written on it, that would be correct. But there isn't just 11 things I could pick. That doesn't make any sense. And of course, the red should be the most likely thing because there's more of them. So it makes sense the top is how many things that match what you're looking for Divided by how many total? What is that as a percentage? 55%. Yeah, just multiply by five, right? Bam. All right, what's the probability that I get a blue or a green? The probability that I get the Borg. I get assimilated. Nine out of 20? Yeah, yeah. So now, again, the top is... The total that matches what I'm looking for, I'm looking for blue or green. So I'm looking for a total of nine possible things out of 20, which of course is 45%. 45%. Kick ass. All right, that's too simple, right? That's too easy. I agree. So let's do something more interesting. So let me see, maybe I could do, no, I can't do that quick enough here. No, no, no. I'm going to have to just make something up. Okay. Has everybody got what they want from this poker chip problem? My, 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 my poker chip. All right. So let's say I ask a question of uh, students 
and teachers. Right? Don't don't try to read that. Just students and teachers. Right? And some say yes, some say no, and some say me. Also give yourself some blank spots on the outside here. Let me make this a little bigger. There you go, John. So let me start filling this in. Um, all right. Can somebody tell me how many teachers said no? How many teachers said no? Two. Two? Say again. Two. Yes. Two teachers said no. Right? I always want to make sure you guys can just read the fundamental idea behind this table. So this is called a contingency table. How many total people said yes? 59. 59. Well, let's just keep going. 42 said no. 10 said maybe. How many students did I talk to? Looks like 51. How many teachers did I talk to? Looks like 60. So how many total people were there in my survey? 111. 111, yes. Not 222. Don't count these plus these because these are these, right? You would have counted everybody twice. Is that is everybody with me? You will see this kind of problem in the homework. I love this kind of problem, so you know you'll see it on the quiz. So now you can understand. I got probability questions I can ask, like insane amounts of probability questions, right? Um, I can ask a very basic one. What's the probability that if I pick one person, we set this up, randomly pick one person, what's the probability that that person is a teacher? Sixty out of one hundred and eleven. Yeah, there's sixty that match what I'm looking for out of one hundred eleven total people, and then whatever the hell that is, what is that going to be? Point five four. Is that close? That's right. About point five four. Yes. It's my one skill. I got to show it off every now and then. 0.540 or what was it? 0 0.5405. 05 stuff, so like 0 0.541? Yes. All right. In fact, let's be, let's, I'm going to get you guys to start doing this. 0 0.5405, is that right? You're really going to love this shit, but I want to get you ready for later. All probability answers need to have four decimal places in the decimal. So four decimal places like this. And then you can make it into a percentage if you want to, right? Is that cool? So you can stop here or you can stop there. Let me stop for a minute. Oh, man. Allergies. So what's the probability that I pick somebody who said me? Ten out of one eleven. What? Sorry. Ten out of one eleven. It's ten out of one eleven. Eleven. So ten said maybe. Out of one eleven, which is roughly point nine something. No, no, point oh nine something, right? That could be wrong. I don't know. Point oh nine oh one. Oh one. Okay. So you can stop there, or you can stop there. All right, so so far that's easy. That, that needs to be easy. So you know it's not going to stop there. So what about this question? What is the probability that I pick somebody who is a student or they said yes? Or and. Or. 
So don't say anything yet, just work on it. So that I wanna, the probability that the person I pick is a student or they said yes. Who's got that? 110 out of 111. How'd you get that? Um, I took the total number of students, added it to the uh, total number of people who said yes, and divided it out of 111. So there's a mistake you made. Hmm. Um, what did it be? One Subtract the eight students. Say it one more time. I see some chats coming in. Let me see it. You have so, to subtract the eight students because if you double count the students that say yes, you'll get like too high of a number. I love it. So if I count all the students and that is 51 and I count all the people that said yes and that's 59, I counted how many twice? Like you said, I counted those eight people twice. So I better subtract them all. Now I could have just been kind of creative and said, if I count all these 51, that includes these, what am I missing still? Those 51. 51 and 51 is 102, which is what you get, right? Out of what, of course, out of? 102? No. 111. 111, because do you know anything about the person? No. The probability they're a student or they said yes. So who could it be? any of them. So the only time the bottom is going to change is if I give you information. Uh, is that 0 0.918? Point 0.9189. Okay. Let me stop for a minute. Did you guys get that one? So you cannot count people twice. No matter what anybody says, you shouldn't try to vote twice because it won't count twice. Oh shit, current events. All right. The only time the bottom in this problem won't be 111 is if we know something about the person that was picked. Because then we can eliminate some people. Does that make sense? Which part, Jenna? I'm sorry. How we got there? Or something I just said. I don't know. Oh, okay. You're okay with, so I got to count all the students, right? I got to count all the students. Or it could have been the people that said yes. So the first suggestion was it was 51 plus 59 out of 111, but that counted those people twice. So if I do 51 plus 59, I got to subtract those eight people off. Now, another way you could do it is say, here's 51 people. How many yeses have I not counted yet? Oh, those 51, that's 102. You can get there a lot quicker. You guys okay out there? Let's do another or. What's the probability I pick somebody who said no or they're a teacher? Is it 100 over 111? So let's see. I got to count the no's. 
42 of those. Let me just do this the not creative way. So 42 no's, and then I kind of count the teachers. That's 60 teachers. But how many did I count twice? If I do these, two. I counted two twice. I like it. So I get 100 out of 111, which I think is what you said. Yes. And that's definitely point nine oh oh something. <laughs> I mean, does anybody see how I'm doing that? Does anybody see how I'm dividing these real quick? 111 is such a kick-ass bottom because if I just multiply top and bottom by nine, I just have to move the decimal back three places because it's basically divided by a thousand. Then, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you got your calculator. You're fine. But I'm not doing some magic shit here. I'm just noticing something. So that is like 0 0.900 something, right? 0 0.9009. Is that, is that all right? So what could you have done instead? You could have said, uh, 42 people have said no. How many teachers have I not counted yet? 58. 42 and 58 is 100. So you don't have to do the add too much, so you gotta subtract part. You could be, you could be clever about it. But what I wanna do is I wanna point out, and don't worry, we are gonna leave a little early. So. I'm not going to give us a break. If you're looking for a break, you ain't going to get one. But I'm going to let us out early. So that's going to be our break. Okay. Um, I want to show you we have a formula now for or. We have a formula for how to do the probability of A or B. So let me take away, let me see, Nasher. So, if I follow what I did in both of these, so, so real quick, is everybody cool with A, B? What, what is that? These are like variables. So variables in probability take the place not of values, but of events. So A could be students, or A could be said no, B could be yes, or B could be a teacher, right? So A and B, capital A, capital B, are events like rolling a three or what a, flipping a tails on a coin. So what is the formula for this? Well, what's it look like? What is 51 out of 111, for example, for this one? That was the probability that I was a student. So it's gonna be the probability of A plus 59 out of 111 was the probability of saying yes. So plus the probability of B but then I've got to subtract all the ones that are, in this case, students and yes. So I got to subtract everybody that is both because those are the ones that would have been counted in both of these. They would have been counted twice. So we see how that's exactly the same. It's the probability of N plus the probability of teacher minus the probability of said no and teacher. That is the general formula for or. So what does or basically mean? Or basically means add. And why does that make sense? If probability is related to all the things that match what I'm looking for, and I'm looking for this or that, it should increase. I got a bigger chance now, right? I like it. I wanted to say something about, anyway, I'm not, because that would probably get me in trouble. It's going to talk about sexual orientation. But that's, okay. So that's or, and is going to be a little freaky. We're going to hold off on and, but let me give you the situation where the bottom won't be 111. Let me show you what it's going to look like. And then, yeah, we got a little bit of time. So don't worry. So what have I asked you? this. I have no idea which Roman numeral I'm on. I'm going to pretend like I'm on five. What's the probability that somebody said no, given that they're a teacher? 
So let me say this again. What's the probability that somebody said no, given that they're a teacher? So what do I know about the person? They have to be a teacher. It's out of all they are teachers. a teacher. I'm given that they're a teacher. So how many people total am I talking about? 60. Uh, Beautiful. Yeah. 60. So my whole universe is that row. But I can throw 60. all these other people out, right? But two out of 60? Throw all the students out. Sorry. <clears throat> so it's going to be out of 60. Out of those 60 teachers, I'm given that it's a teacher. So I'm only talking about these people. Out of those 60, how many said no? Two. Two of them. And that's point zero three 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 three. So if it's given, it's strictly teachers. I mean, it's strictly what it's given because um, I was thinking it would be 42, but if it's given, it's like the only thing, like specific. So watch. You got to be careful about the grammar of this. The probability that they said no. So I have no idea if they said no. The probability they said no, given that they're a teacher. So watch how nice this is. Whatever the second thing is, is what the bottom will be related to. I'm given teachers. So what's on the bottom? Out of the number of teachers, because that's what I know is true. Let's do another one. What's the probability that somebody is a student given that they said yes? Or given that they said maybe, sure, why don't we use some maybe? Student given maybe. Take a minute, try to figure it out, see anything. So what's going to be on the bottom now? Who's got that? 51. No. 10. 10. What are you given? What information are you given? Given, they said maybe. So I can throw out everybody who didn't say maybe. So therefore, I'm left with 10 people. Does everybody see that? Yeah. This is the information. You're given this information. All right. So the second dude always sets up what the bottom is. Out of those 10, how many are students? Three. Three. All right. And that's an easy one, 30%. Yay. Yay. All right. So let me do three. Let me do one more thing and then we'll talk about what the formula is for given. What is the probability? Let's just take a step back. What is the probability I pick a student? Just pick a student. 51 out of 111. Yeah. And, and what is that? It's 0.46, right? Really. 0.5495. 5495. 5495. Doesn't seem right. Is that what it is? No. 0.4595. There it is. 0.4595. That sounds more like. Okay, now watch. Now, real quick. That is the probability I pick a student. This is the probability that I pick a student, given that they said maybe. Did the probability change given more information? Did the probability yeah. it was a student change? Yes, it went down, but it changed. So would you say that answering maybe and being a student, are they independent events?
what do you, what's your gut tell you? The fact nope. that it did change. Nope. What was it again? That is correct. Doesn't it just make sense? I didn't even explain what the shit that is, but doesn't it just make sense? If knowing one thing changes the probability of the other thing, they are dependent. What's probably a student? Well, it's dependent on what they said, right? Probably a student not knowing what they said is one thing, but if I know they said maybe, it suddenly goes down to 30%. So I would say that the, the event student and the event said maybe are dependent events. Okay. We're going to come back to that idea, make it a little more formal, but not right now. We're going to come back to it. I just want to lay the groundwork a little bit. Just, just get that basic idea out because everybody screws independence up. And that is all it is. So how could they be independent? What would this number have had to have been if they were actually independent? The same, the same as the student? It would have had to be this exactly. It would have had to be right the same thing. Then they would be truly independent. Because that would mean knowing this didn't do a damn thing to this. And that's what our gut should say independent is. Okay, okay, maybe, maybe. Ah, uh, poor little dude. So let me look at the, uh, God, I'm just beating you up. Go over there. All right. Um, let's develop a formula for given. Oh, shit. <laughs> I knew I was going to do this, which is fine. I got to tell you this eventually. This is the symbol for given. Right? Because math people, we don't like words. We like to replace them with symbols. So it's a straight up and down line. It's really unfortunate because people read this as A divided by B. That is not what that shit says. This is A given B. It's a straight up and down line, not divided by. So let's see. What goes on the bottom of the probability of a given? What always goes on the bottom? Whatever is given. Yes. So this would be probability of B because that's what's given. Now, now think about it. If I know, for example, if I know it's only teachers, why did I put a two up here and not 42? Why didn't I put 42 up here? That's how many said no. Is it a given? Yes. So I couldn't include the no's that came from students. So what does the top always have to be? It has to be one and the other. Because how did I get three here? Why does it say three? Because those are the ones that are students and they said maybe. That's why it's a three on the top. All right, maybe, maybe. Man, you guys are making me sleepy this time. <laughs> Be All right. And real quick, I didn't do an and problem, but just to show you, and then I think we might, yeah, sure, why not? Like we could have a nice early day. Um, uh, let's see, no and student. So I call and the mean bouncer, and I call or the nice bouncer. Just go with me, right? I, if I come up to a bar and the guy says, you can't come in here unless you dress nice, oh shit, or you're rich, teacher, <laughs> or you know Joe the bar, I know Joe, I'm in, right? I'm in, I just had to do one of the things. So that's the nice bouncer. Probability always goes up when you have an or because it includes more possibilities. And is the mean bouncer. That guy, I come up to him. Sorry, little dude. 
And he says, okay, you're only getting in here if you know Joe. I know Joe, and you got to be rich. All right, and you got me already. <laughs> Have any of you guys ever applied for uh, a scholarship? Yeah. So I, let me tell you, back in the 90s, back in the day, before some of you were born, I love that. There was this big ass book in the financial aid office, and you would come in, and you start going, "Okay, must be a math major. Check. Must be uh, at least one thirty second Cherokee Indian. Check. You must have this GPA barely. And then at the very bottom, and you must be a woman, <laughs> right? And then I keep going. So you have to meet all of the requirements. That's an and." that decreases the number of things that can get in, right? Does that make sense? So an and probability will always be less than either one of the things. So what is the probability that somebody said no and they're a student? Forty out of fifty-one. Yeah, and, and the cool thing is another name for and is intersection. So what is the intersection of student and no 40? Because there's only 40 that match both. So it's less than 51, it's less than 42. It's all the ones that are both. So that'd be 40 out of what? 51? No. Thanks for playing. 111. Did I give you any, did I give you any information? Oh, yeah. No. 111. And of course, whatever the shit that is, 0. 0.36, something or other. All right, maybe, maybe. All right, what do you guys think? You guys think that's all right? You guys all right? You guys, uh, anybody upset if I stop there? I want my money's worth. You said whatever, I don't care. So, the quiz will be active at 3 p.m. So you will be able to access it. Now, I really want to make this clear. Well, let me be clear. The minute you open it, you say start the quiz, your timer starts. You cannot stop it. You've got to be kind of certain that you're coming in at a good time. So you can do it right now if you want to. Get it out the way. Get out the way. Okay. Um, anybody going to start it like right now? So let me, uh, the class is over. Class is over. You can head out now if you want to. Don't forget the quiz. I'm probably going to send an email out like right now for anybody who wasn't here because now they can partake of the quiz too. So I'll remind everybody so you don't forget. It's due tomorrow at 10, but the minute you open it, you have an hour and 15 minutes to do it. Is everybody with me? So two 10. things. I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry, 10 p.m. or a.m.? A.m. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody have any questions? And then secondly, anybody want to start the quiz? And I just want to like be here as you log into it, if anyone wants to start it now. Anyone have any questions? Let's start there. Or why is everybody here just staring at me? They're freaking out. Class is over. If you have questions, ask. If you want to try to log in and make sure you can access everything, you can do that. Uh, it's not quite three o'clock though, is it? So three o'clock when it unlocks. I have a question about yes. um, the relative frequency graph. Yes. So, um, when you're so the relative frequency graph, you are going to use the, um, so, okay. If you wanted us to do a cumulative frequency graph, you would use the cumulative and then the classes for your graph. I'm sorry, say it again. You're a little bit muffled. Oh. So the thing, so the graph, is that better? Can you hear me better? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the graph for the graph, for the relative frequency graph, you're, you're not yeah. 
you're going to want to use like the relative frequency on the, I guess you would say the Y axis and then the classes on the X. And That's not, right. Like, okay. Yeah. And then if you wanted it like um, the community, the cumulative frequency, you would use the cumulative frequency and the classes like that. Or you would not? never put the cumulative frequency on the histogram. You would never use those to make a histogram. Yeah, it's a different kind of graph that we didn't go over that uses cumulative frequency. Okay. okay. I think one of the problems actually says, one of them is a cumulative frequency. You can tell because it just kind of keeps going up, but it's not a very generally useful thing. Uh, let me see, Frida, section two, three, of course. That's what office hours are for, yeah. Yeah, sure, that'll work. Um, how's everybody else? You guys all good? Maybe some of you guys are not actually there. I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to head out. Okay. I'm going to go away now because I don't see anyone asking me anything. Good luck on the quiz. Let me know if you have any issues with it and I'll see you guys later. Bye.